Hello, my name is Brian Swan, and I'm a developer advocate at Microsoft. Most of the time, I focus on PHP interoperability with Microsoft technologies. But what I'm going to do today is introduce you to the concept of transaction isolation levels, which is a relational database management system uh, concept. It's not a concept that necessarily applies to PHP or any other uh, database access technology. Uh, I'll use SQL Server and SQL Server Management Studio to introduce these concepts. In order to get the most out of the content of this video, you need to have a basic understanding of database transactions. To introduce the concept of transaction isolation levels, I'll use a very simple table called bank account. Uh, it has three columns, account ID, checking, and savings, where the account ID is the primary key. And I've already executed this script, so I've already created that table. And one of the scripts that I will come back to throughout the course of the video is a very simple script that exemplifies the importance of database transactions in general. It um, simulates moving $10 from a checking account to a savings account. And this is very clearly a unit of work that you would want to uh, succeed in its entirety. Having one of these statements, one of these update statements, succeed without having the other one succeed would not accurately reflect a transfer of money from one account to the other. Where database transactions get uh, very interesting is when you have many transactions going on within a database at the same time. Um, and that's where transaction isolation levels come into play. Uh, there are four transaction isolation levels that I'll cover in this video. Uh, read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable. To demonstrate the read uncommitted transaction isolation level, the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that I have $100 in the checking and savings account for account ID 1. So let me execute this script. And the next thing I'm going to do is come over to a very simple script that is in a transaction and it selects all data from the bank account. But notice that I have set the transaction isolation level to read uncommitted. And essentially what that means is that it will read data from other ongoing transactions that has not been committed yet. So if I execute this now, I see the data that I would expect, $100 in each of the checking and savings account. But let me come back to this script and notice that this update, uh, this transfer script, is also part of a transaction. But I've commented out the commit transaction piece of this, so that when I execute this, that transaction has not been committed yet. But because this is this statement is in the read un uncommitted transaction isolation level, when I execute it, I see data that has not yet been committed. That that checking and savings update has not yet been committed. I can come back uh, to this here and just highlight the commit transaction piece and now execute that. And the transaction has now been committed. And of course, this will still return my 90 and 110 values because it is reading, um, it is reading committed data now, but it will also read uncommitted data. Whether or not you want a transaction to execute under the read uncommitted isolation level will really depend on uh, the nature of your application and what you want, what kind of data you want to have access to. To introduce the next transaction isolation level, the first thing I want to do is reset my bank account so that I have $100 again in each of my checking and savings accounts. So I've executed that script and the next transaction isolation level I will introduce is the read committed transaction isolation level, which essentially means that uh, this transaction, when I execute it, will only read committed data. So right now there are no other transactions going on, and when I execute this, I get the expected values of 100 and 100 in each. But if I come back to this transaction that is um, simulating a transfer, and again, uh, notice that the commit transaction part of this is commented out. When I execute this, that transaction um, is still open. It hasn't been committed yet. And when I come back to this that is in the read committed transaction isolation level and try to execute this, note that, look down here at the bottom of the screen, that this query is being blocked from executing because it will not read uncommitted data and there is uncommitted data um, from the table it's trying to read. And if I come back to this um, transaction here and I commit it, it will 
now be a committed transaction. Now when I return to this, notice that the query has executed successfully and I do see the now committed data of 90 and 100. Now obviously if you have many transactions that are in the read committed transaction isolation level that are being held up or blocked by um, other transactions that are ongoing, um, that you have to weigh against the need for only seeing uh, committed data. So again, whether or not you use the read committed transaction isolation level will depend on uh, the nature of your application and again, what sort of data you want or expect to get. The next transaction isolation level I'll look at is the repeatable read isolation level. Before I do that, let me reset my bank account. So I'll execute this query to set my checking and savings to each to $100. And then let's take a look at this query. Notice that this is the same select query I've been executing before, but it is uh, has an isolation level set to repeatable read. And this is called the repeatable read isolation level because uh, you should be guaranteed to get repeated reads for the same select statements um, as long as you are uh, within this transaction. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to mix things up a little bit here and execute the select statement first. And I'm going to leave this transaction uncommitted. Notice that this is commented out. So when I do this, note that my query was successfully executed and I, have I get the expected data. But now let's go execute the transfer. And I'm actually going to try and run this as a, a full transaction. I'm not going to leave this one open. So when I execute this, notice down here at the bottom of the screen that this query hasn't completed. It's being blocked because the repeatable read isolation level says we should always get repeated reads. So when I execute this repeatedly, let me execute it again, I'm guaranteed to still get the same data that I got before. And I can execute that again and again. Um, so until this transaction is committed, this one will continue to be blocked. So let's, let's come back over here and let me select just this commit transaction piece and execute it. And that transaction now has been committed and notice that over here, this transaction is now complete. It has completed the update. Now, when I try to run this uh, select statement, let me just run this as a complete transaction here, notice that the data that I get is updated data. I did not get a repeated read. And once again, whether or not you want to use this isolation level will depend upon your, uh, the nature of your application and what data you want or expect to get. Okay, the last isolation level that I'd like to take a look at is what's called the serializable isolation level. And in order to show you what that isolation level does, I need to show you one thing first, and that's what is called a phantom read. In order to show you that, I'm going to use the same transaction under the repeatable read isolation level, and I'm going to uh, comment out this commit transaction so that I can execute this transaction and leave it open. It hasn't been committed yet, and we can see we get the expected data. Um, and what we saw, what we just saw was that if I tried to update that bank account, uh, that would be blocked because we want to make sure that we get repeatable reads. But what would happen if someone tried to uh, insert or open a new bank account by inserting a new row into that database? So let's go ahead and execute this and see what happens. And we'll notice that that query executed successfully. And what that means is that if I come back with this transaction open and again select everything from bank account, I'm going to see a new row. And that's what's called a phantom read, a row that seemingly appears out of nowhere uh, in the middle of a transaction. Um, and what the serializable isolation level does is prevent that from happening. So let me, uh, let me commit this transaction. And let's, in order to show you the serializable level, let me get everything reset here. So let me uh, update my bank accounts so that uh, account ID has 100 in each. And I'm going to delete that new row that I just created. So execute that. And now to show you the serializable level, I'll use the same, same transaction except this time under the serializable isolation level. I'll execute this leaving it open and we get the 100 in, in each checking and savings for account ID one. But what would happen if I tried to now open a new bank account? So let's execute this and notice that this query is, is executing, it's being blocked. It hasn't completed yet. And that's because now with this transaction still open, if I try to read everything from bank account again, 
I will not get that phantom read. The, the, select, uh, the serializable isolation level prevents uh, repeatable reads. Sorry, it prevents um, uh, phantom reads and it allows for repeatable reads, so it will also block uh, the update statements that we saw uh, before. So now if I commit this transaction and we come back to this insert, we'll see that it has now executed successfully. And of course, now that this transaction has been committed, if I try to select everything, I will see now that new row uh, has appeared. So that's the, um, the serializable isolation level is the strictest of, of the isolation levels. It will allow for repeatable reads by blocking updates. It will um, allow, uh, it will block phantom reads by uh, blocking inserts until the transaction has uh, completed. To finish up, let me summarize what we took a look at here. Um, we looked at four isolation levels, the read uncommitted, read committed, repeatable read, and serializable uh, isolation levels. And we looked at uh, dirty reads, essentially that was reading uncommitted data, non-repeatable reads, and phantom reads. And under the read uncommitted isolation level, all of those are possible. Under the read committed, we don't get any dirty reads, but we um, do get non-repeatable reads, and we do get phantom reads. And under the repeatable read isolation level, um, we, we don't get dirty reads. Um, we don't get non-repeatable reads. In other words, we do get repeatable reads, and we still can get um, phantom reads. And under the serializ serializable isolation level, the strictest, no dirty reads, uh, no non-repeatable reads, and no phantom reads. And that's it. I uh, hope this was educational. Thanks.